Hey everybody, happy Saturday. Hope you're having a good weekend so far. Um, figured I'd, I'd come on and do a short stream. Uh, uh, we did so well with the spinning pop bumper cap last time. Uh, I wanted to spend a little bit of time refining the design of the whole thing and then maybe write some code to uh, MPT3K. with a raid my god well welcome everybody uh, we're just getting started um last stream we uh uh we put together a spinning pop bumper cap mod uh that kind of worked um today we're gonna refine the design a little bit to make it a little bit more rigid and and uh more viable and then uh maybe write some code to control it a, a, a bit so stick around if uh, that sort of thing interests you and I guess let's get into it. Oh, uh, one other thing. I realized that all of my streams so far have been doing uh, screen capture at 30 frames per second. And I'm still using Twitch Studio. So I'm on training wheels. Uh, I'm, I am vowing now to go ahead and jump over to OBS soon uh, so that all that gets smoothed out and fixed. Okay, so uh, this is what we had set up last time. And uh, let's see the parts again. Okay, that's just the cap. So what we've done is we've taken the... Uh... Oh, thanks for the follow, good grief. Appreciate it. All right, man. Uh, see you later, Manu. Uh, thanks for the raid. I appreciate it. Um, hey, Iskadu. I see you. Is this for a VPX table? No, Jess, uh, this is a real mod that I'm trying to do for uh, Don't Panic Flip stream. Uh, well, Don't Panic Flip George, if you know him. Uh, if you don't know, go follow Don't Panic Flip. He's great. Uh, but he had mentioned that this would be a cool mod to have on uh, his uh, TNA, his Total Nuclear Annihilation. So the idea is that we want to we want to be able to spin the pop bumper cap uh, just in general, or when it gets hit, or when the uh, uh, reactors are going to be destroyed, or whatever. So, uh, that's the thing. thought I was already following you. Oh, thanks for the follow, Ice do. Thanks, good grief. I appreciate it. Um, so, okay. Getting back to this. This is what we did the last time. Um, so, we've got this tiny, tiny motor uh, that actually fits in here. One thing uh, that I've been thinking about, the design that we currently have here uh, basically precludes you from putting in a normal uh, wedge style lamp fixture. I'm not sure what's in the TNAs now uh, or what modern pins actually ship with since they're almost always uh, RGB nowadays. So this might not be an issue or we might be able to get around it by replacing it with something else. But um, I started thinking about, I guess I'll show you now, why not? I started thinking about a way that we might be able to move this over uh, so that these are the, the holes that the, uh, uh, the wedge lamp comes through. Um, and there is precious little space sitting in the pop bumper cap body, uh, but what I was experimenting with here is maybe doing some sort of gear drive system uh, to spin this outer race and then, uh, you know, be able to uh, uh, put a light in here as well. It will spin in short spurts or re-rotate. Both, uh, both, Terry, as the, as the idea. Toyota Boy, good to see you again. Don't complicate it. I know, I know. I'm not going to, but I just wanted to uh, uh, to play around with this concept. Also, I was really curious if I could print gears, and it turns out I absolutely can. Yeah, so take a look at that black plastic on black background. I'm sure you can see that just fine. Um, but it was just something I was thinking about. It would be nice if we could if we could uh, solve that problem at some point. But in the meantime, um, uh, you know. We don't have to worry about it. Um, so here are uh, here are the issues that we ended up having with. I hide. There we go. Um, the print that I had done last time these uh, these relief holes for the screws uh, were non-existent actually. Um, so 
the print itself, uh, it fits, but the pop bumper cap sits a lot higher. Um, uh, it's got a, a, a much higher profile than it needs to. Um, so I think we can fix that. And uh, the top part of it is still pretty wobbly. I want to fix that as well, basically, by sinking that more. Um, and then uh, the, the standard pop bumper screws uh, that I have both holding the bottom to the base and the, the pop bumper cap to the bracket, uh, the bracket screws are too long and they interfere with the other one. So I happen to have, I have a ton of old printer parts. Uh, so I think I'm gonna grab a couple of, of uh, M3 screws and, and use those for now. Um, ultimately, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to do is I want to go ahead and switch this these units to millimeters. Um, I've been thinking in millimeters so much that that uh, it's hard to flip flop back and forth. Mixing metric screws with imperial plastic parts, I, I I'm aware, I am aware. Um, I don't, I just don't happen to have any small uh, imperial screws like that on hand other than the ones that I'm already using and they're too long, so I can clip them. Uh, but, oh, maybe I'll clip them. Hmm, yeah, I don't know. We'll see how, we'll see what happens. All right, let's go ahead, clear this assembly, make these something more millimeter-ish. I know that this is everybody's favorite thing. Okay, what else are we doing? Uh, it's probably fine. Um, let's go back in time a little bit. Uh, what was the other thing? Um, I was gonna check to see about how much clearance we had in this thing and see if I could move it down a little bit. Uh, this probably isn't strictly necessary, but I'd, I'd like to uh, have as low a profile as I can. Uh, uh, with this thing, there's my section analysis, okay. So, you know, right now, that's not much room. What are we looking at about? Uh, 4.75 millimeters, which is, Yeah, that's, uh, that's officially not much. Okay, I guess we'll leave it where it is. That's all right. I bet we can make that plastic bit up there a little bit, a little bit thinner. It'll be all right. Okay, so let's go back in time again. There. And, oh, let's see if that's gonna be the thickest gonna be all right let's make this extrusion significantly shorter maybe two two millimeters 1.5 let's do two all right and then that's our enclosure for the motor that's probably okay I wished that that was slightly tighter uh, I might want to think about a way of of uh, increasing that tightness. You know what, let me put, let me do this. Let's, uh, this is as good a time as I need to do it, I suppose. Nope, not the thing. Uh, let's go ahead and throw in, oh, this is, oh, this is gonna be weird, okay. Just lost the plane that I'm looking at actually want to look on the inside. Uh, hmm. An easier way to do this. Okay, let me just project the side in here and then we can hide that, okay. All right, so now we're looking at the inside of the pop bumper, or uh, of, the, of the motor bracket, rather. Um, And let's just 
put it in a little tab. Um, this doesn't even have to be big. Where is my mirror thing? The tree. There we go. And uh, doesn't have to be big at all. Well, let's do it a little bit bigger than that. Four. And make this deep. Four. Okay. Let me probably show this again. And let's see what is. I guess this is the best way to do this, and we'll just draft it down. So let's come in half a millimeter. This doesn't have to be much. I just want to snug this up slightly. Uh, there's the draft. Um, direction. That's fine. And we'll do faces here. Pull that down just a bit. And give this a very slight, uh, let's make it a chamfer. Uh, that might be out of the range of the, uh, um, the ability of my printer to print. I don't know, if this doesn't work out, I can always just snip those off. Uh, and with that in mind, um, let's go ahead and mirror those components or those no not components features let's do you know what let's just do let me go back and hmm just two faces Oh, but we gotta mirror that too. Dang it. Alright. Fine. I'll do it the easy way. Features all three of these. And then our plane should be XY plane. So optimized. Yeah, of course that didn't work. Does it work if we go back in time by one? Probably. Uh, components, so keep picking that. I would have just drafted the internal walls, better chance of hitting the longer the wall because of the steps. That's a good point. All right. Yeah, okay. I like that suggestion, actually. Thank you. And it doesn't even have to be much. It is It is very tight. Or, well, I'm, I wouldn't say it's very tight. It is snugly tight now. So, yeah, I guess we can just draft these in slightly. Um, is there a way that we can do that symmetrically? I'm not even certain of that. We'll be here. Will this automatically flip for me since it's got a different normal? Ah, it does. Uh, one degree over the whole thing. How much of a... Let's see how much of a difference that actually makes. Okay, we're 10 millimeters first. Oh, that's the opposite of why, what I want, actually. Thank. I think I actually want to squeeze it the further it gets pushed in. We actually want the draft, or the uh, angle to be there. Draft out from bottom, so long as your size is right. Uh, by out, you mean to open the cavity up here, or to squeeze it? Like that. Right? what you're talking about? Boy to boy? What does this end up giving us? Right, but depends on how tight it is now. Yeah, I, what I, I wanted to do, okay, I wanted to do about a half 
a millimeter, which isn't much, but that'll that'll snug it up well. And this is now at 9.5. Um, so we'll give that a shot. We'll see how that goes. Uh, if not, we can we can always revisit. Okay, so continuing in time, what else did we do here? Oh, I guess we were done with this this bit. Um, that is awfully high. Let me let's see. We had four millimeters to play with down at the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and do. I'm gonna move this. Uh, move our motor. There it is. Uh, we're gonna move that down just slightly. We'll make it fit. Are you using standard pop cap? I am. Um, well, I think I am, actually. They're, uh, now that I say that, I I might just have Williams style. Have they changed? I, well, I know that they have since the EM days, but um, uh, are the solid state pop caps significantly dinner? Or, Significantly dinner, significantly different. The 3D printed custom pop caps. If you're worried about height, um, it isn't that necessarily what it, what I'm what I'm hoping to do. I I want to make this mod as unintrusive as possible, where you can just kind of kind of throw it in whatever machine. Um, okay, did this give us a smaller profile? Now that I've moved this down by two millimeters, what is this? Yeah, that's pretty good actually. Um, so the height of it, the height of it is mostly aesthetic. Uh, okay, that'll work. Let's see if that does any better for us. Okay, if it's stock pop cap, uh, how would you even see it spin uh, with a sticker on it? Is the idea? That's a good point though. Um, uh, who was it? Fliptronic actually was suggesting that that this mod would look really good in uh, Hot Wheels, and I haven't seen a Hot Wheels in person, but uh, it's my understanding that the caps are are um, actually wheels. I don't know if that's a sticker or that's that's molded plastic or what, but that's kind of what I was, what I've been going off of. Most of the Stern machines use flat plastics as caps. Oh, really? Okay, I didn't know that. Well, maybe it won't matter then. Um, as long as the uh, the screw patterns are in the same place, then um, that should be a, you know, that should be fine. Let's just make this right up on here. I want to. I want to go ahead and. Uh, did we not? Oh, we built relief into this later. Okay, we'll move this back to the, back in where it should be in the timeline. Okay, and that is small. That's okay. What are these? I uh, have to actually measure these. So we're going to be using these for the bottom. And the relief doesn't need to be much. Two, two millimeters. Okay, so that's about that's about right. Looks like. Um, yeah, that's two, and that leaves us how much to bite with? A little bit over one. It's pretty thin, but um, yeah, I think we'll be all right. We'll try it. If not, it's not a big deal to to change later. Uh, let's make this... Um, let's try to go pretty flush. Uh, the plastic that I'm going to be printing this out of... Oh, that reminds me. I'm going to hold it up. Uh, the print... or The plastic I'm going to print this out of is PET, uh, which is relatively slippery. Um, they, I could always print these out of nylon if I needed to. Um, so... You know, a, a little bit of uh, 
three in one oil underneath this if it's even necessary it would slick that up enough to not have to worry about it and if it's on perfectly i won't get any rubbing anyway but that's kind of a big if okay i'm not sure what this oh these were the relief holes for the mounting screws let's see start at the object and go a distance and do this get a one that uh, not work hot wheels pop bumpers hot wheels pinball by american pinball so this oh, yeah. is their third game it follows houdini master of mystery and oktoberfest pinball on tap and for this one where well, Oktoberfest is seen by many as a more adult line. themed one, beer, yeah, all that, this, uh, this one is definitely... Yeah, that's a good point. Okay. Uh. Alright, even printer cam won't be able to see me doing this. I'll let that heat up for a second, then I'll put in the PT. Um, all right. I want to start at object, which is there. Okay, there. That's what I wanted. Um, I went ahead and ordered some M1.6s, which is apparently the only, uh, uh, the only size I don't own. Oh, I just realized these are gonna, these aren't gonna print well. Um, just so that I can, I can mount that motor in here um, in case it becomes an issue. What was it that we, was it these? Okay, yeah, there. Oh, I see what we did. Let's flip this around. New object. Distance. What I'm worried about, I'm sitting here thinking about how exactly this is going to print. Um, uh, since this is going to be upside down, uh, technically these screw holes will be uh, they'll be inverted, so they won't have... Uh, you'll be printing an error as you're doing this uh, the circle. Generally, it fixes itself after a, a layer or two, so it doesn't matter all that much. Um, but because we have almost no plastic underneath it, uh, I feel like I need to put in uh, a little bit of... Uh, this isn't perfect, but it... it uh, uh, we'll give it a little shelf as it's uh, as it's printing, which will make it um, not print in air because uh, it doesn't have all that many layers to fix itself before it's uh, we've gone all the way through the part. So hopefully that'll make a little bit more sense once I put these in. And we want to make those tangents. that and bring those up by uh what am i gonna, i'm probably going to print this at point two so we'll do that and now i want to mirror that again two features that airplane will be Maxi plane i can no no that didn't work there it is. Okay, there they are. That's strictly there just to make it print better. Oh, except that, of course, we put the sketch in the wrong object again. Uh, the bracket. Nope. Okay. Really ought to name these as well. Truth be told, I wasn't sure that I was going to 
actually revisit this. I thought I might redo this. No, I'm still editing the wrong thing. Um, but here we are. So okay, now we're good. Point two, and we'll do our mirror. That one. Airplane again. Is there... Okay. Good. We're in business. Uh, I guess technically I need to do the same thing for this. So let's just take care of that quickly. Whoa, this is weird. Hmm. Uh, make sure these are projected properly. Exact same thing again. Our features there and let's see you again. Okay. All right. Good. So that that should help. That should avoid a problem uh, as we're printing. Um, okay. So now. Uh, we are back to what? We're too far back in time. Okay, so off camera also, or off stream, I realized that I had uh, 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 measured the pop cap incorrectly. There's actually a, <laughs> a 1 28th of an inch uh, here on the sides that I hadn't accounted for so this uh, this particular part is off a little bit but I think what I want to do instead of worrying about that is just make this well let's see now let's worry about it um, yeah I suppose we could just print this the way that it is uh, these need to be longer uh, I'm not entirely certain how much but let's put this, um, see how far we can sink this. Um, so let's go ahead and let's put it where it would be and then just move it up. Um, motor bracket. go okay I'm not entirely certain how much clearance we have in there but we do have our analysis so we can take a look uh Um, let's see. Our... All right, so that interference there is going to be an issue if we leave it this low. Uh, I think I'm probably okay. Um, it, it occurs to me that, that this face that I'm highlighting right here is a snug fit to the outside of the pop bumper cap, or body, rather. Uh, so we're not going to be able to lower that all that much anyway. Um, what we can do is let's align that lip to the top of, uh, top of this and then move it up by a millimeter. 
there. Okay, so that's the height that we want it at, uh, which means we need to change these extrusions accordingly. Uh, oh, did I, did I capture position? I did not. I need to. There we go. In fact, why is this, what is this not like now? You failed. That doesn't make sense. Find the sketch plane to here. This has dire consequences sometimes. Okay, that's fine, but we needed to. I guess it's okay. Is the upper rotating part going to have a set screw to keep it from rubbing the lower part, or could you just extend the upper top to automatically distance itself off the top of the metal shaft? Um, the the top part is such a, uh, a tight friction fit that essentially you adjust it by just moving it up and down on the shaft. Um, uh, the, we kind of had a discussion last stream uh, about whether or not using a grub screw on this was, was going to make any sense or do any good. It might if this was out of metal, uh, out of plastic, it's, uh, it's likely not going to do anything except for strip out. Um, and the, uh, the friction itself seems to be just fine. Oh, that, okay, this got all messed up because we were taking... All right, let me move this. Okay, we were taking uh, uh, projections off of this cap uh, for that. Okay, so we can move it right after uh, we, we uh, made this sketch. Okay, that's why that was all messed up. So, that's our first extrusion. Extrusion. Uh, I guess I'll keep that small just so that it blocks less light. And here, instead of going a distance, let's go all the way to, well, not that. Oh, the starburst is gonna be different, isn't it? Um, oh, and that's, okay, in this particular case, uh, with this move, we need to go ahead and rotate this out 90 degrees because I have these offset. Finish. Okay, there. Now we've got the surface of the screw um, bit. So, yep, that. And we want to go to object, which is the bottom face. And then for this guy, um, I guess we at least want to go to the top of the, of the shaft here. Uh, I didn't like that for some reason. object there why does it not like that face that is bizarre I seem to keep on running into these things when I'm on stream fusion is usually much better about this um, okay let's uh, hide that hide analysis let's just do it again uh, there's the sketch, extrude that profile up to here. Join it. There we go. Now that is going to be monstrously difficult to, to uh, push all the way down to that. In fact, I kind of I kind of want to put a cap on this so that it can bottom out might end up destroying this motor doing this, but hey, all for science. 
All right, we'll do it one more time. That profile and that one from that face by a millimeter or two, two if we have the space. Um, go ahead and chamfer this out a bit. Um, that's exactly what I was talking about. Okay, yeah, well, if I wanted to put a grub screw in, it would be right here. I mean, I suppose I could put the hole, sure. Let's do a, what do you say, an M2 grub screw? Why not? Um, I don't think I have any of those. I might somewhere, but um, just for the heck of it, let's go ahead and uh, make sure that we're editing the right um, right object again. Okay, mid plane. I mean, those guys. That's actually our our uh, origin anyway. We could have used one of our origin planes, but instead, I'm just going to do it this way. Throw that up there and project that guy. Go. Whoops. Mid um, two millimeter. Uh, you shouldn't need the hole by continuing the top like that because the top will set the depth rate and the flat part of the shaft will make sure that it doesn't need a set screw at all. Um, that's true. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, uh, yeah, this is actually pretty unnecessary. If, if we go back to that... Uh, we could even make that a little bit, this a little bit shorter, and still put in the the set screw thing. Um, this may be the better design by not capping this off, because that way you've got uh, you've got a little bit of leeway in how you do it. And since this is a friction fit so so tightly anyway, uh, we can just assume that the the set screw is uh, is optional but at either rate it's fun to model so we can go ahead and finish that out there we go through everything and let's add some where are they threads there they are Metric two, two point. Yep, those are the ones. We'll make that a little bit easier to start. Nope, not that easy. That's better. Okay, well, cool, great success. Um, I think, I think that we are probably ready to try this again. Uh, we have, let's just go below this at all. It does a little bit. I'm looking right here uh, and I'm I'm considering extending this out. I guess the screws will do their job. Let's just let them, let them work. Uh, and these holes, all right. So I guess now it's, uh, it's time if I commit the cardinal sin of, of um, mixing metric and imperial fasteners um i guess i won't and i'll just clip a couple of these uh alternatively um well no that's not gonna work do i have anything up here to clip these i don't think so i'm gonna have to use my bolt cutters downstairs all right i'm gonna do it i'm gonna make these metric <laughs> I know Toyota Boy, but it, it bugs me a lot, actually, uh, to, to do this. But um, mostly because the... Uh, the um, Wait a minute. I think I do have some. I've, I'm sitting here thinking I've got the, the, uh, the M2 screws that I have are... Or they're M3s. They're socket head. Uh, so you'd actually need two different tools to put this together on this.
see, do I have anything short enough? Um, ooh, I might. Oh, out, out, those are... Um, okay, how long are these? Because these are barely... Well, that might be overdoing it. And of course, those are the exact same length. And I think these are too short. And those are... Alright, well, we'll try it. See how it goes. And these are three, yes. Yep. Okay. That's the wrong one. Where is... Oh, I didn't do these as holes. Shame on me. Should have. That's one. That looks like a damn comfortable chair. Um, it is, but it's falling apart. The uh, uh, I've I've got my last few chairs from uh, uh, Office Max, and now the thing is, uh, I think it's closed. I don't know. The one near us is anyway. Um, and they're they're great for about four or five years, and then they literally just kind of fall apart. So this. This arm is on its last leg, and one of these days it's just going to give out. Hopefully that won't be on screen, but we'll see. Uh, what was 2.5? I'm going to do this. You know what? This is... We're not going to do... Undo that. Find that extrusion, which is there. And we're going to extrude those two. Go back. Yep. No. And we're going to make holes. Like we should have in the first place. I say we. I guess I can blame you guys when I'm, uh, when I'm streaming. But <laughs> no, I should have done this in the first place. Those. That's all that we need off of that. And put in our holes. Them's big holes. Ugh. I'm going to have to instruct the printer. I'm, I, there's some setting in there where I can tell it print that even though it looks like you shouldn't. Because uh, it's too short. All. Let me make sure I'm not cutting it in anything else. Yep. Um, I can actually tap these. Oh, well, I need to make this uh, this profile anyway. This will slightly undersize it at three millimeters, as you can see here. Take full responsibility. Well, now that you've mentioned my chair, what you need to take full responsibility over is if this catastrophically disintegrates while I'm on stream someday. Oh, I'll remember that. Okay. All right. That's better. I feel better about that. I don't remember what this extrusion is now that doesn't work. Uh, was it... Was it that? Seriously? Oh. Oh, did I not... I didn't... Okay. Wait, yeah, I totally did. I thought that uh, I had anchored this to the origin, but something's going on. Okay, I'll we'll just... Use. Can a 3D printer manage the threads inside the hole as well, or does it have to be done after? Uh, it does. Um, the... It, uh, part of it part of it depends on the layer height um, the the settings that I'm going to use and generally use is about 0.2 millimeters which means it can't do any uh, any details more uh, you know it, smaller than that um, but what it does is as it's printing the circle it, it actually moves the circle very slightly on every layer and then it ends up giving you threads um, 
they're not precise. Or, or what you can do is you can, uh, currently in Fusion, the, the holes that I just did are not modeled. Um, there's a checkbox for whether or not it models it. And if you model it, then it actually builds the, the threads into the hole. Uh, so then when you print it, um, it'll, it'll print the threads. I don't do that. Uh, generally for for these kind of screws and stuff because I found that that not putting in the threads just using any old screw uh, essentially will cut the threads for it and it's it, it holds on to it tight enough that it's it's not gonna go anywhere or I rarely model in threads if I need to use a machine screw I use brass inserts that's true um, sometimes I'll, I'll model in larger threads for uh, well bigger screws I guess starting at, at maybe a quarter inch because then the threads have enough actual mass to, to kind of matter. Uh, when they're this small, it's really easy to cross thread uh, plastic when it's this small too. So, um, you know, generally I just leave the hole just big enough to be able to, to get a screw in there and have it cut its own threads while you screw it in. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, let's anchor that. Try this again. Oh, okay. I know what I did. Kind of. Let's find that middle point there. Okay. All right, so that's much better. Oh, and that's the other thing. Uh, as long as we're beating this thread thing to death. Uh, if I'm printing where every layer is going across horizontally like this, these threads won't really print. Uh, they kind of do, but but as each layer is going down, once you get into into uh, these uh, very shallow angles, all of the resolution for the threads kind of goes away. So the only time that that printing threads for real kind of works is when you're doing it where the the uh, hole is perpendicular to the print head. All right. So that seems pretty good. Uh, oh, we're all heated up. Got the load. Oh, and we can go now that we're going to do this. There, now you get the printer cam. That extrude out while oh, we're doing that. Um, let's go ahead and make this a single layout. What am I doing? That. Okay, so we'll hide all of the rest of the stuff. Take that thing and let's align that with that. Flip it. Okay, and move. There are a few different ways that you could do this layout to print, but this is quick and easy. And now I can just take this entire thing and export it. Uh, I'm printing this in clear, which isn't really clear. It ends up being white. Um, but it does have some translucency to it. So I figure if, if we get to the point where you can actually shove a, uh, an LED in there, um, it should at least bounce around a little bit more and give less of a shadow. Uh, I don't think there's any way of getting around a big shadow with this, but okay. So all of that looks pretty good. I'll send it to the slicer. And do two millimeters speed. Let's see how long we got. 35 minutes. Okay. So we can actually finish this on the stream. Oh, I got to find that setting for those tiny, tiny walls. That's in here somewhere. Uh, tech thin walls. There it is. Place again. Huh. That's interesting. Oh, the other hole is the, is a different size. Okay, well, I'm glad 
Now we'll just we'll fix that again. Wait, why? What? That doesn't make sense. Why is that bigger? That shouldn't be bigger. Oh, that, okay. Yeah, when I made that change. Are both of those being projected? No, all right, I put in an offset myself. I don't want to do that. Come back. Oh, I'm glad I checked. This would have been annoying to have screwed up. Make this hole because we end up cutting holes in it in a second. There we go. All right, that's better. Try it again. Oh, and we're using PT. Okay, well, that still didn't give us a wall. Why not? Is there another one? Okay. Well, I'm not too worried about it. The screw will actually hold in there just fine. Um, yeah, let's just go ahead and uh, print it. And let's see, let me get this up on screen too so we can see what it's doing. Okay. No, this doesn't help you know, me adjust this a bit. There, that's probably better. Yeah, I'm kind of curious about that too, Toyota Boy. You mentioned that you did some VPX models, uh, right? Oh! Already, this is wrong. There's no uh, uh, there's no shaft in here. Oof! Must have gone away when we uh, were messing with some of this other stuff. Okay, did we do it this way, or did we read that out later? Fine. The thing that actually made me think of this is that I really want to add a chamfer to this so that this is easier to, to put in. So it's probably overkill, but we'll do that. And then another one there, actually. Will this let me do that? Can I do... Oh, yeah. There. Okay. The reason why I'm doing that is because when you when you print, the very bottom layer has a little bit of uh, thermal expan. Well, not thermal expansion. The the fact that it's it's uh, squishing it down on the print bed means that there's a little bit of an elephant's foot. Uh, that, that can make that really difficult to get a shaft in if uh, if this is that exact size uh, because it'll roll over that elephant's foot and basically wedge uh, between the part and the uh, and the shaft. Um, let's pretty this up a bit too. Just do that. As long as we're here, let's make this a little bit. Well, 
a little bit smaller. Okay. Yeah, I'm happier with that. Uh, right to the end. Make sure that we've got that in there. And let's do it again. Oh, interesting. So, did turning on detect thin walls? Okay, it makes it suck more. Huh. How about that? Okay. Fine. That's, that's what I want. And that's what I want. And those all look correct now. Let's try it again. All right. So now that that's going on, I figured we should uh, write a little bit of code here. Um, one thing I forgot to do before the stream was figure out um, I, I did a thing where I can uh, integrate um, the Arduino build environment inside of Visual Studio. Uh, what I couldn't remember was how difficult it was to actually do that. I think I need to set up a project with the, it's been a while, with the uh, Arduino IDE first. So the things that we're gonna do, um, this is an ESP8266. Uh, they're they're becoming pretty ubiquitous, actually. We could do this with an Arduino or anything else, but this is what I happen to have on hand. Uh, so it's what we're gonna use. Um, oh, this is the uh, this is the test program that I just thrown together. All right, where where do you live? Where did I put you? Me. Uh, okay, yeah, I put it under a you know. So let's do um Oh, you know what? Given that I'm gonna be streaming all of this stuff anyway, let me just open up my um pinball solution entirely, because that has firmware in it. So we can just use that as a template. Okay, um, we should probably do uh, mods. Okay, and we're going to want to add, um, essentially this proto driver, so do this manually. Uh, we want to copy the project. Um, I never did end up uh, setting up a thing to um, uh, a wizard to do this automatically. Uh, probably should have, but I need to name this thing. Spinning pop bumper cap is not going to work long term. But, well, I don't know. I guess it'll have to work for now. I'll call it a spin cap. That's easy. to XML so that we can edit it. Sure. Uh, we need a new GUID for it. Here. Uh, 
and uh, change this to spin cap. Those have to be the same name. Um, does this have, I thought that this had some other, I guess it doesn't. Okay, no, well, whatever. Thought it had another reference to the actual name of the project, but I didn't see one. Back to that, and where was so take that and throw it in there and rename that to spin cap. Uh, okay, that's so now mods existing project. Pinball, firmware, libs, nope, logs, and cap. There we go. Okay, let's see, is that centered on stream? Yeah, it looks okay. Let's do that so that you guys can still see the, uh, the printer doing its thing. Looks like the adhesion was pretty good, so it's good news. I should succeed. Okay, now this doesn't have. Let's see, I don't really need these cores in there, but uh, I guess I can keep them in there. And we want to change this to. ESP 8266, and I think it is the Node MCU uh, that works with this. Um, no. Okay, we did that for all configurations. Uh, is there anything else that I care about? The COM port. I gotta figure out which one this is. Um, I know that it's saved in the Arduino IDE, so let me just open that again. If it cares to. There we go. I'm 11, okay. That was the second one that I tried to open. Um, all the rest of this is not gonna matter for what we're doing today. That's, that's good. Let's open this up. Let's reformat everything because I hate the Arduino IDE. And I guess I'm not going to say that I'm fully prepared, but I know that I'm at some point going to have to start arguing with chat about where, uh, where brackets go and how code should be set up. But, um, Um, but hopefully not today. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. So let me, yeah. So this was uh, on a 3D printer. What is something like this part you're creating cost overall? Well, the printer itself is the expensive part. The, uh, the roll of filament is, uh, actually, I think that the slicer can give us a, an estimate. Roll of filament varies from like $15 up to up to a lot depending on what the material is I typically the ones that I buy are typically 20 bucks ish um, but we're talking in the couple of cents range uh, not very much at all ten dollars a spool yeah the I've gotten kind of spoiled using uh, Prusament at work Toyota boy so I, I tend to spring for that nowadays uh and it's only just because they've they've dialed in the settings perfectly um for you know their their printers uh, which makes a lot of sense so it's basically I'm, I'm essentially buying the time to not have to worry about it um where's this doesn't this say yeah so the estimate on this is about 15 cents you can go in here and, and manage cost of everything but it's it's almost nothing uh, doing the bigger prints uh, end up costing you more. 
uh, particularly when they fail. All right, let's get rid of that. Um, okay, let's just run. And here in this, since we don't have one, uh, start the serial. Um, again, 15, 200. Jeez. Okay. Um, that, let's just... So the thing that I did the other day was just get it so that this uh, OLED uh, on it is bootable. I needed to figure out what uh, what profile the library needed to use to get this particular board to work. Um, having done that now, I'm not even certain that, that we'll end up using the OLED at all, but uh, we have the option at some point. Yeah, we seem to be building, so that's good. We're still printing. That's also good. Hopefully this won't take quite as long every time. It, it seems to be kind of hit or miss as to whether or not it rebuilds libraries that Arduino environment does. What else was I gonna do? I guess I should start breadboarding something. Um, so, uh, this is one of the H bridge modules that I got, uh, just off of, um, uh, off of Amazon. And, uh, if, if you don't know what an H bridge will let you do is it'll, uh, it'll let you power a, a device and select which polarity you want to use. Uh, uh, changing the polarity of one of the uh, one of these electric motors will change the direction of it. Um, so what this should allow us to do is as uh, turn in either direction. Um, additionally, it it you know it has it in there so that you're not you're not powering it directly off of the microcontroller pins and and that sort of thing. What I don't know is whether or not I can use PWM to control the speed of this, and this could work as an ESC. So we'll. Um, We'll try that today because um, uh, it, it might even be cool to have these things generally just spin very, very slowly. And then every time they get hit, they spin quite a bit more or go backwards or something. Um, so if that's the case, then I can buy higher RPM motors in here and we can we can control the speed more precisely. So that'll be good. Uh, prototyping wires galore and I have to use some of these alligator clips where do you buy your PLA Toyota boy you get it wholesale someplace or is it uh, is it just somewhere in Amazon so we can get away with that for now Boy, these prototyping wire bundles always just turned into this big rat, rat's nest. So um, this was a thing, you know, when I first got my 3D printer, I thought to myself, you know what, I'm probably never going to use this, but there are so many uses for it, like like uh, uh, these things. Yeah, here you go. Um, I'm able to print out this little comb piece basically and it can keep all of the all of these prototyping wires from uh, uh, getting all tangled up um, so you know as soon as you have a printer I guess it's like owning a hammer for the first time you as soon as you get a hammer everything looks like a nail but as soon as you have a printer then every problem looks like something that you can just print to solve okay so that is our motor what did I, okay, I just lost them again anyway. And let's do, let's do this to just hook up to the, uh, uh, the leaf switch here. 
and we'll use that as an input uh, for the for the motor or for the microcontroller rather. All right, that should be good enough. Now I haven't actually used this uh, ESC before. Um, There are much better ways of doing this prototyping, but this is how we're gonna wing it. It's gonna look pretty confusing sitting here on my desk. Let's see, get these screws out of the way. Oh. need to figure out a good way of, of uh, trying to stream this for the future, not today. I had mentioned this earlier, but um, sometime real soon, I'm going to bite the bullet and just start using OBS because it, it became apparent to me that my main screen capture is capturing at uh, 30 hertz. Um, Whereas this whole time I'd gone well out of my way to have a 60 hertz stream. So, sorry about that. Uh, did this succeed? Uh, sure, it looked like it did, but didn't upload. Didn't you upload? Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's what I would expect. Huh, that is troublesome. So it looked like it built, and it looked like it uploaded, and it did not actually boot. Yeah, hmm. I'm 11, oh, yeah, upload after compile. Yes, of course, upload after compile. Oh, I didn't upload it. My bad. Okay, anyway, what were we get to? Um, we are going to need, let's see, two of these inputs. Uh, we also... Yes, need to. Well, we certainly need to share ground. Right? Or these have opto isolators in it? I'm not sure. This is low enough voltage that we'll go ahead and share ground just to be safe. Uh, Black. Share ground. And we'll do. Green and blue. Okay, good. We're getting the outputs that we wanted. Uh, green and blue, we'll put them on... Uh, let's do D2 and D3. Theoretically, it shouldn't matter how uh, or what polarity we hook this up to, it'll just go a different direction. But, okay, let's get this. Can you guys see that, kind of? Uh, let me get a piece of tape so that it's easier to see the yeah.
Okay. Um, uh, so, yeah, this. Right, we need to power. Um, red again. Yeah, I'm actually not sure what state these pins are in, so. Okay, now with that theory, if I take one of these and put it at positive voltage, I think this is supposed to turn. And it doesn't. Let's put that at ground. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, all right, all right. So both, one of these is floating. Okay, so that gives us one direction, and if we switch these, yeah, then we spin in the other. Okay, we're in good shape. Cool, so that works. Um, let's start writing some code. Okay, so that's that's the OLED output. I don't actually need anything on screen. What does this printout do? Um, okay, that's fine, whatever. Don't need any of that. Okay, so let's define some pins. Um, Ender one is uh, E two. We all right? My computer dying? Stream still look okay? Good lord! Oh, oh, yeah, that's bad. Okay. Interesting. Uh, yeah, so when I was leaning over, I was shorting <laughs> the uh, motor power. Let's put a little knot in there and keep that from happening again. Yeah, and this is why it's bad to do this with such a shoddy operation. Okay, and those are still floating. So, uh, D2 and D3 in setup. We want to come in here and make those uh, set in mode, right? Set, set pin. Uh, what was that called? Pin mode? There it is. Okay. Um, pin 2, output. Actually, these are not D. They're just 2 and 3. Okay. Those output um, set in right? No, dang it! It's been a while since I've uh, done Arduino coding. Oh, digital right, of course. Okay, so let's do this. Let's, uh, for now, let's just completely nix the uh, uh, the OLED stuff. But uh, for now, let's just do uh, digital write uh, dir1 to 1. But first, let's do digital write pin dir2 to 0, just to make sure that we do those in that order. And then swap them and just put in a delay of a thousand milliseconds between each. All right, so if this works, 
what we should get is spin for a second and then turn around and spin the other way for a second. Uh, you aren't using your computer's USB port for power, are you? I am. I am actually for, it's a USB 3 and uh, when I had hooked this up, I didn't think it was actually pulling in that much amperage. I pull on a USB chip by shorting, never mind the amps. Well, as it turns out, I don't know if you were watching, but a second ago, I just inadvertently shorted those uh, those pins and we seem to be okay again. Now we should probably print something out because this is not... Uh, this is not spinning. Print out the frame every every two seconds. Uh, did we do this right? Yeah, we want to turn off one, turn on two, and then when we come here, turn off two and turn on one. It should be doing what we want it to do. Unless I have the wrong pin assignments on this thing. Um, that's a distinct possibility, actually. Let's see how we go. How's our print going? Getting pretty close. Like. Um, 12 more minutes. Oh, well, we should probably increase frame number, but at least we know that we're going. Um, it's inverted, maybe? No? Okay, well, I obviously just have the in assignments backwards or something. Uh, let me pull that up. Ironically, I think that the best source for, uh, let's see, this is a Helltech Wi-Fi Kit 8, uh, which we can find, well, maybe the, maybe the pinout is readily accessible here. Okay, yeah, of course not. D2 is 16. Uh, oh, but that's the OLED thing. I wanted to, okay, let's do D7 and D6, which are 12 and 10. Uh, okay. D7, D6, there we go. Try that again. Where is... All right, we'll keep that up just in case we need it. I wanted to pick a couple that actually have uh, BWM on them as well, so that we can. Uh... Here. Um... Let's do this as well. Uh, well, let's start with both of them. Okay, here's what we're doing. Go a thousand, then we turn it off, and then we'll delay 500, so half a second. And just do it again with in the other direction. And then we'll print out frame and decrease it. Give that a shot. nice thing is that with this setup, um, it would be pretty trivial to go ahead and set up a, uh, uh, a small PCB that's got a microcontroller on it and, uh, 
at least a few of these H bridges so that you could control four or five, six pop bumpers all at the same time off of the same MCU. Well, odd. Okay. You know what? Let's find the pin. Doesn't make sense. Wonder if I have an old board revision. They did two revisions of this board. Um, seven and D six. That should oh thirteen, thirteen and twelve. What is this other one? Oh, that's the ESP pin number. Okay. Well, 12 should have still worked. All right, well, let's try it. 13 and 12. This is the way this goes, ladies and gentlemen. I feel like we're getting pretty close though. This will be nice. And then hopefully these parts are just gonna fit because, you know, that's how that goes. And then we'll have something actually going. Um, fairly soon, I'm gonna have to contact somebody with a TNA that I can drive to their abode and start looking at what we can hook into. Um, I can't remember if it was Scott's stream or on, on somebody's stream, Scott Denise was saying that the uh, reactor status, he has that that uh, actually being output. Okay, here we go. Great success. It's working. It's good. Um, anyway, what I was saying is that uh, uh, Scott was saying that he had uh, programmed one of the LED outputs to reflect the uh, status of the uh, reactors in the pin. So we could actually use that as input to uh, the microcontroller um, to, to determine if we should be spinning quickly or not. Um, and then beyond that, I, if, if all of the switch wiring is direct wiring, that makes that a lot easier too, because then we can just use the same uh, switch contacts to de detect when the pop bumper uh, spoons are, are uh, activated. And if not, I mean, there's always a way to snoop it. Um, worst case, you could, you could detect when the coil fires. Um, seems like overkill, but okay. So, um, uh, I guess we have we have the ability to go in either direction now. That's good. What was I going to check? I was going to check whether or not we could change speed. That's what it was. So let's do this. Let's do... That all works. That's great. Um, analog rights. Uh, in... Or one. Um, no, not right range. Uh, I forget what the values are. I can't remember the range. It might be 0 to 255, but let's go look. Um, oh, I'm right. Whoop. Mm. Okay, 255. It's a bite. Alright, so let's do this. Or uh, let's make that an ant to make sure that it's big enough. Um, uh, well, we could do that. Let's do this instead. Um, I'll just do it in here because I don't care. Static bite. Nope. 
Wait, I thought you had bite in here. Okay, you do, which is not colorizing it for some reason. All right, uh, uh, duty cycle. Zero, and let's do, um, every time we go through this, duty cycle, and uh, increase this by 16, I guess. And then delay for 100. So we should see this go fast, go slow, if this actually works. I'm not even certain that it does, but that's why we try things. How long are we having to print? Three minutes, so says the printer. We can try that bit. All right, there we go. I can't breathe. I can't sleep tonight. All right, so what do we have so far? I'm sure we can get five volts. This could also run at 12. Uh, there's no reason why it can't, but we get that directly off of the uh, the table. Um, so if I were to put this on a PCB, I would need the H bridge. I would need a step down converter for the microcontroller. Uh, I could actually just use one of these these modules probably. Okay, well we're not seeing any motion yet. Uh, I guess that doesn't work. Hmm. Uh, how do we, how do we set the, uh, Arduino set, uh, PDMA on frequency, I don't remember. Oh, that's a good point. We could just bit bang this. We're not doing anything else. Let's just do that. Um, uh, digital right under one, one, and delay, delay milliseconds. Uh, let's do a duty cycle. Probably want this to count down, but all right. So let's do 255 minus the duty cycle, and we don't actually. This probably doesn't super matter, but um, let's get rid of the frame output. Oh, that's funny. Okay, so this whole time, I don't know if you guys can hear this on stream, but this whole time I've been hearing this kind of whining sound uh, that's sweeping up, and I assumed that it was the music that I had in the background. It's not. I can hear the H-bridge turning on and off at high frequency. Uh, so that, uh, basically, I think that we're just switching it too quickly. Or if this is getting hot. Nope, we're good. So if we if we bit bang it, we're not we're not uh, uh, precisely choosing what our uh, um, what our frequency is. But oh, I forgot to turn it off again. That doesn't make sense. This should work, right? I'm surprised that we didn't see this just continuously turning. That's what I would have expected. I wonder if uh, flying that PWM signal fried the 
age for his shouldn't have. Oh, and our parts are done. Well, let's give this a shot. I still hear it trying to do its thing, but it's not doing it. I guess we need to make this duty cycle quite a bit longer uh, for this to work. But in the meantime, uh, let's go back to what worked. Uh, disconnect the motor power. And um, let's put on our new parts, see how they did. really sticks. There you go. Okay. Need to remember to immediately throw away... Oh. Bats. Immediately throw away these old parts, because otherwise I'll get them mixed up. parts. Hmm. Okay, well, this looks pretty good. Can we shove this in here? Oh, man. Okay, well. Yeah, I think that uh, I'll need to go back and undo that draft, or at least put it lower, because, um, where are my snips? It's always a way to hack it, though. <clears throat> Boy, that's still, is that bottomed out? can't even tell. Might be. Well, at any rate, let's continue. Make sure that we have this lined up properly. This is, this is difficult to see in this light. <sighs> Oof. Yeah, there's no danger of this. Just... Flying off on its own. Nice. Okay. Give it one more good. Ow. Things that I do for science. Okay. Oh boy. Yeah, this isn't this isn't sat completely. Okay, well now we know that draft was too much. Well let's do a little surgery on this part. this up a bit. It's already kind of split, which worries me because of the previous one that I did. give us a little bit more breathing room. Ooh. 
nice thing is this part only cost 15 cents apparently we can always just make another one okay Boy, that's still not all the way down there. We're gonna have to cut these sides too. Yeah, I think in the future, we're just gonna leave it the way that it was. split this right off but we'll see every time I cut into this it's getting a, a shearing along the layer lines okay but the good news is we're bottoming out on the top now that's what we want now somehow I might want to actually model in some relief for this too. This is way too tight. I'll just open up the hole slightly. Okay, well, that'll all I have to do. That does fit now, so that's good. Screwdriver. Well, once we get that taken care of, that seems to be pretty good. I'll have to play with tolerances to open this up just a little bit. See how we do next time. Okay, yeah, the screw clearance looks good. That's yeah, about as hard as I want to push on that. Let's get rid of this trash. I've got a bag back here that I just put all of my prints in. Failed prints and garbage prints, etc. Okay, so now, because of the way that we did this, this should... Yeah, that's that's a nice tight fit, and the, the cap itself is resting on top of... Uh, on top of that part, which it was not before. Now we should be able to thread these in. Somewhere. There's the hole. I think I forgot to chamfer these, did I? Let's look. Yep, totally did. Let's do that now while I'm thinking of it. Go back to actually editing this part though. actually fine okay okay I'll remember that uh exacto blade Let me get that exact there we go try to open that up just a little bit so that we can get it started My best not to cut myself on stream or at all for that matter okay there we go now we're gripping 
the other one. Give it some stability. I think this can work, but I, I have not been able to, I have to apply way too much pressure to push this all the way down on the shaft because that that uh, hole is way too small. So there's still a little bit of wobble here, uh, which we'll fix next time. But um, I mean, that that is totally reasonable. That is, that'll work, I think. So let's do, go ahead and power this again. Make sure I don't get backwards. Okay, what was the other thing I was gonna do? We were gonna hook up, I uh, thought I'd pull those out, but we were gonna hook up a switch just for fun. So the things that I'm sitting here looking at are how concentric it looks, and it's pretty good. Um, I bet if this was if this was all the way down on the shaft, and these uh, these parts were nearly you know rubbing, that they'd align each other even better. But that's pretty good. I'm definitely happy with that. Um, I think I will play around with. Uh, uh, Still trying to use some rudimentary form of PWM on this thing, uh, probably just by bit banging. But I think in order to do that effectively, I'm going to have to order another one of these motors uh, that's that's faster. They don't take long to get here. All right, how are we going to do this? Uh, do green to ground, and then we need to find what input we want to use for this. So D8 is GPIO 15. That's in here somewhere. There it is. And we'll call that switch pin. 15, there we go. Did we? Oh, I guess I didn't upload this other thing. Okay. Must not have, I hope. Because we're now only going in one direction. Which should not be the case, but uh, we'll take a look at that in a second. Uh, so let's do this. Um, last trigger. I don't know what the millies returns. I think it's just an end. This will give us the, oh, it's an unsigned long. Now is millies if, so we're gonna do this so that uh, um, if now minus minus trigger, if that's less than 250 milliseconds, uh, we'll just skip this. All right, so let's just do more than. This will give us some really basic uh, uh, switch debounce because right, we're going to get it off of that leaf switch. Okay, so we won't trigger this any faster than 250 milliseconds. Uh, if, oh, let's do the pin mode as well. We put pull up. Uh, so if, um, visual read, 
Uh, we can switch equals zero because it'll normally be one. If it equals zero, then then we will do. We're gonna go ahead and trigger this. So last trigger equals now. Uh, we're gonna digital right. Um, oh, put in that dir so that we can change direction. So, um, so if we're going in one direction, we'll do well here, we'll do this pin equals dir. Uh, There. Ah. Having my keyboard all the way over here, I fat finger typed uh, Windows key down, I guess. So, um, okay, now we flip the direction and now we want to do a digital right uh, pin one delay. Uh, 250? Sure, sounds good. Pin back to zero. And do a little bit of switch debounce here. Obviously this is not the way to do this. Somehow I opened Fusion again. But let's get that going. See how we did. I guess we're done with the printer for now. Unless we want to make the change. I'll, I'll do that. I'm going to do this in a second off stream if I don't do it now. So I might as well. Okay. Uh, what were we going to do? We're gonna come in here and we absolutely oh let's get rid of this draft because that made that way too tight and now now that we're pushed so far down um in the pop bumper cap it's actually giving us some um some pressure upwards okay let's sit there for a second Oh, we're flip-flopping back and forth. Okay, well, at least that means part of the code is working. Uh, hmm, okay. We'll look at that in just a second. Uh, let's back to here. Let's see, we want to take that and that and offset it by... I think that is probably too much. Let's do 0.15 combined 0.3 millimeters <sighs> problem is is that as soon as we uh, as soon as we go over uh, then the shaft isn't gonna isn't gonna hold anymore I guess we'll try that okay All right, and away it goes. Oh, I can just close that actually. Okay, back to our code. What is it that I have done here? Print out um, the uh, value of the switch pen. I suspect that it's just not. Maybe I'm using the wrong one. And switch 15. 
just verify that one more time. PIO 15 is B8. I'm pretty sure. Yep. weird. Anybody else see that uh, just go away part, right? <laughs> yes, it does say no way, man. Actually, you know what? Now that you've said that, Toyota boy, I bet uh, there have got to be pins that have faces on the pop bumper caps. That would be great. Alright. Let's give that another shot. Let's see. Printer bed is still heating up. That takes a while. I don't think there is, but there's machines with puppet heads. Yeah, I as soon as you said the cap says no way, I, I immediately thought of Rudy on Funhouse. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Kiss! All the pop bumpers on Kiss are uh, uh, Kiss members. Okay. Well, that. Uh, hmm. Okay, it's definitely just some code issue here. Uh, and having said that, I should just be able to switch this to 3.3 in ground, right? Well, that doesn't make sense. I set the uh, the pin mode on this to pull up. Um, and it's giving me... Yeah, when I plug it into 3.3, .3, we get a 1, which is what I would expect if the switch is open and there's a pull up. Yo, did you see my pick of the TNA pop? No, I haven't yet, Flipdronic. Thank you for, uh, for doing that. I usually shut down... Uh, uh, Discord when I'm streaming. Okay, well, that... That is just odd. Okay, well, you know what? We can fix that easily. Let's take this and go to 3.3 instead and come back in here. It's a custom PCB. How's the concept panning out? Well, so far, so good. Uh, just for the heck of it, uh, well, let's see, what have we just done? I'm printing another rev of the parts because it was incredibly difficult to get this thing on the shaft and I couldn't push it all the way down. Um, I also, I don't know, I did some minor tweaks, but the uh, uh, the parts themselves seem just fine. Uh, they're nice and rigid, everything's working. Um, so now, guess we'll do that. This, this should do what we want now. Um, so now, just for fun, uh, we've uh, I've hooked up uh, the actual spoon switch and the pop bumper to nudge it and switch directions every time. So currently, it thinks it's constantly being hit, which is why it's why it's uh, shaking its head at you. Uh, but it does work. Um, one of the I, I've decided that what I want to try to do I'll, I'll do this uh, another time because it's going to take a lot of trial and error but I want to get faster ones of these and then figure out how quickly I need to to uh, provide a PWM signal to the H bridge because uh, I use the the built-in PWM and it's way way too fast uh, but since we don't need precise speed control um, 
then uh, oh, I got to turn that off too. Sorry, uh, because we don't need precise speed control, uh, I can probably just bit bang it. It's a DC motor, which is why I've got the H bridge. Um, I, the Toyota boy actually is the one uh, who suggested this uh, this motor. It's a geared. Uh, it's a motor with a gearbox that's small enough to fit inside of this pop bumper, which is incredible. Um, I bought a couple of really, really tiny steppers, uh, but you know, as he as he kind of pointed out, the gearbox gives this thing a lot of torque, uh, so it feels very much like a like a, a servo torque. Um, whereas those steppers, I have no idea what their torque is, but they're they're apparently made for. Uh, adjusting camera shutters in uh like in phones and stuff like that so uh, i would imagine it's pretty low the thing that i realized is that i don't have any logic in here to then not listen for another switch so this is essentially is every time that i have the pop bumper skirt tilted we should start getting the the head shake again so let's see and it works So in practice, oh, you know what the other thing is? This is a six volt motor and I am, uh, I'm driving it off of five, which means it's, it's enough to drive it, but it's, it's going to be slower than the, uh, 100 RPM that it's supposed to be running at. Uh, I could fix that and it will either fix it or totally fry my USB port. Hmm. Uh, mods, if you could start a vote in the chat, that'd be great. It's interesting. It's switching directions so quickly like that. I'm just doing that in code. Um, uh, I have it. Uh, I'm flip flopping the the direction each time, and I'm I'm letting it go for a max of 250. The thing that I was thinking about for TNA that might be kind of cool is if nothing is happening at all, maybe it's spinning pretty slowly. Um, is there a reason for reversing direction? Just, just cause, just cause I could. I could actually uh, uh, replace the H bridge with just a tip or something, uh, some transistor um, uh, or a, a, a MOSFET or something to, uh, if I only want to go in one direction. But uh, I thought it would be fun to have the option because you could, uh, like, if you're thinking about Hot Wheels and stuff like that, you could have all. Well, how many are there? Three, four? I don't know. You could have you could have some of them going in one direction and others going in in the other. Uh, but then when this happens, they all go in the same direction and you know look like you're peeling out or something. I don't know. Just whatever. But um, what I was thinking about for for TNA that might be kind of cool is if they're very very slowly turning all the time, just so that you get that nuclear symbol. Uh, uh, turning a little bit and then every time they get bumped they you know they they go a little bit more you know just sort of a thing and then go back to their their normal pattern um <clears throat> but i think it was in it was in your stream that scott came in and said that he had hooked that up to uh an rgb output uh the uh, sorry it the uh uh reactor uh destruction state so you could take that reactor uh, reactor destruction state, and as soon as you're up for destroying the reactor, then it starts going absolutely nuts. Uh, or maybe, you know, and then when it blows up, it switches and, you know, does a little rumble and goes back and forth and whatever. I don't know. The, uh, this particular setup is basically just for fun, just to, to see if I could get it to go. I, I had these H bridges that uh, I haven't tried out yet, and they seem to work. Um, you know what? I don't have a cable made uh, this long enough to get to. I need to. I absolutely need to set up a, a Tinker Desk uh, camera. That's that thing. All of this stuff. Um, because if we're sitting over there, I actually have all my tools, uh, plus a power supply, and you know all that junk. Um, let's see. What do we want to do in the meantime? Um, ooh, that stopped working for some reason. Okay, that's fine. Um, 
Yeah. I, we need to be able to move this faster. It, is it driven off five volts? The, the motor itself is a six volt, volt motor. Uh, I am currently driving it off of five volts and living dangerously and driving it off of the five volts that my USB is providing. The reason why I'm I'm comfortable doing that is because the the motor is tiny. I have it hooked up to a USB 3 port, which would give me an amp and a half, and uh, I wasn't pulling that much off uh, at six volts, I don't think. So as long as I don't stress it too much, it should be okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, and earlier, uh, because of this jank layout that I've got with all of these alligator clips, I managed to short the USB positive uh, and ground voltages uh, several times, and my uh, computer didn't catch on fire. So I think I think we're okay. Uh, it's it's smart enough. If it's smart enough to do reverse voltage, then browning out, I think it, it'll be all right. Yeah, that would be bad because I've got so much crap plugged into that thing now. Uh, what was I going to do? So once we... Once we do this... Okay, after after we've done this, we want to sit here and do... We'll just do this quick and dirty. Let's make this go for a full second just so that we can see it. I need to get a faster one of these because... Um, uh, yeah, we'll just sit here and do nothing. Uh, do you have not have an adjustable power supply? I do, um, but what uh, the this wide angle camera that I've got is very very wide, um, so it makes it look like I've got this big office. This room is tiny, so. Uh, Pretty much every square inch of this room is is spoken for in some way or another. Um, what I've got over on the wall, it's probably pretty hard for you to see here. Actually, I can do this. That's a little better. Um, these things here are... Uh, uh, I have those on a French cleat, and essentially what they are are a whole bunch of plastic modules that I have printed out that hold my small tools, there are a couple of, uh, of uh, lamps that are on there that are on goosenecks that you can kind of see. Ah, there it is, those. Um, and then right underneath those goosenecks is, that is the variable power supply. And it is a, it's tiny. I have it hooked up to an ATX power supply. It goes up to the 36 volts, I think, something like that. Um, but I have it hooked up to the 12 volt rail on the thing. So I can get to about 11 and a half, which generally is good enough for me to, to tinker with. Um, and then I also uh, have all of the breakouts for the ATX on there, which is what that module is. And then the next one over here is a, a, a vacuum pump that uh, I can use for doing uh, surface mount uh, placement and stuff. So anyway. Um, yeah okay let's just try this out so basically basically what we should get now is i should be able to fire the skirt it'll turn for a second and then even if i'm holding down the skirt it'll stop full setup i should make an actual bench at some point yeah it's it's really handy uh to have all that stuff in the same place and i've got uh i splurged and bought one of those magnetic uh, uh a really nice one of those magnetic plates with the the big goosenecks on it uh, with the alligator clips and stuff like that it's been really handy a variable power supply to mess with electroplating Ooh, cool how, how far did you get i've been interested in in trying some of that stuff out but never actually did it not far what i'd love to be able to do is make habit trails out of uh uh out of brass and then just coat them so that they look nice because then i can uh, i can solder them all right let's see okay that second one is obviously it's debounce that's happening on there so that would have to go in there but at any rate okay so that works um hi becca good to see you uh, if 
Is there, a, see, I don't, I don't even know this because I don't have a real pinball table yet. Um, and I'm just making my own, so it's whatever I want. But uh, is, is getting a 12 volt power uh, rail a better idea than doing five? I mean, is that is that more reasonable or does it matter? Um, because if that's if that's the case, I could get uh, one of these 12 volt. Okay, 12 volt accessory lines are easier on some fans. Okay, uh, so these other when I when I order the faster motors, I'll go ahead and order 12 volt variants of it, and then I guess just make myself a long ass cable to go for my tinker desk to here. I think that's usually what color DMD taps. Not sure though. I want to double check. What are the are the are the color DMDs actually DMDs? Because how would they be? That that would be amazing if they're running that off of 12 volts with that many things. I know that the the old DMDs run at like 115 because they're each row is uh, uh, done in series. If I'm not mistaken, which I might be because I don't own a table, but um anyway uh what was i doing i don't know we've we've kind of done everything that we're gonna do uh we've got 23 more minutes left in this print um and i'm kind of out of ideas unless you guys have anything you want to see i'll wait yeah i don't think they use high voltage like old dm days Oh, some are LED, DMD, the others are LCD. Okay, that makes sense. Show the motor and pop up close. Yeah, uh, how am I gonna do that? Move very carefully, I suppose. I mean, Yeah, so I hit the spoon with that, I think. Either that or the leaf switch is just way too close. Um, uh, oh, curious how it's fitted. Well, here, let me, uh, since you weren't here, I can, it's probably easier if I just show you how it's modeled. Boy, something is... I think I'm printing too much stuff out in that text thing. That serial monitor is just something I threw together to be able to, to debug stuff. Uh, what am I doing? Let me close that. And I'm back up a smidge. Nope. Wonder if there's a possibility to do that spinning hologram stuff with that. Uh, what spinning hologram? You mean like put a hologram sticker on it or something? Such a high. Well, but see, that's the thing is that. Uh, I, well, you know what? As long as we're here, I might as well try to actually PWM this a little bit. Um, that's something else that we can do right now, because I'm still kind of having fun doing this. Uh, so, Jordan, to answer your question, that's the whole assembly, right? Uh, they use them on bike wheels and stuff. Oh, I'm not sure. Oh, the LED sticks that rotate and create an image. Those would have to be pretty fast, but I suppose you could. Instead of using a pop bumper, well, if they're if they're passive, that's fine. Otherwise, you have to have a slip ring that you can do at high speed, I guess. Um, but at, at any rate, uh, in answer to your question, so that's the the cap. These are the parts that we've made, uh, where uh, just the stop one just goes into the motor shaft and the, the cap screws onto it. Um, and then let me hide the assembly itself. So that's that's how this works. It's dead simple. Um, I don't actually have the screws to mount this in here. That was another thing is we printed this with uh, uh, two little uh, uh, tolerance in here. So I had to butcher the part to actually get it in here. But um, Integrated in a clear cover. That's legit. Thanks. So, yeah, that's that's the whole assembly. Um, there's 
pretty much nothing to it at this point. Uh, this this next print that we're doing, I opened up the uh, the shaft tolerance so that we can get it on there, um, and then put in these bevels because it was hard to do without an exacto blade. Uh, but that should be fixed now. Um, so yeah, let's let's do this. Uh, Um, do you set screw the yellow piece in place? Uh, no, Ice Key Doo was in here earlier and he, he asked the same question as to whether or not uh, we needed a set screw or anything. Um, the answer is no, because it's incredibly tight on the plastic. If I were to make this out of metal and have it machined or something to where it's, you know, got, got reasonable tolerances, then having that, that set screw might you know, make some sense. I went ahead and put it in there just because we can, uh, but it, it, it really doesn't serve much of a function. Maybe, maybe after years of use or something, you could put a, a grub screw in there and it might might do some good. But um, yeah, for now it's just kind of vestigial. Um, uh, spin, spin cap. We'll call it. All right, what are we going to put in here? Um, speed from zero to two fifty-five. Uh, well, we want to we want to pin that we want to do this on speed. Um, just do an end of uh, milliseconds. Let's do m sec. And I think that's it. Let's switch this back to spin cap pin uh, speed. Let's just start at one sixteenth the speed, one eighth. We'll do one eighth milliseconds, thousand. There we go. And if we didn't actually worry about the speed at all, I don't want to do that. And Wait for MSEC, and this is not actually necessary. Um, do you screw the yellow piece in place? Uh, you screw it to the top bumper cap. I would be afraid of the ball creating upward force to knock the lid off with it. Being QA, just I'm just like, how can a fast-moving ball f with it? Um, there, there are a few things that we could do to combat that uh, if that actually becomes a problem. Um, the the fact that this is kind of taking the spot of of the lamp bothers me uh, i started going down the road of looking at how to um how to maybe make enough space and uh i'll open this and give you an idea of yeah so this adds just a, a smidge of complexity to the entire thing but Theoretically, it, it should be possible to move this this far over, move the motor this far over in the pop bumper. These are the holes that usually the wedge comes out of, so you could still put a light in here. But then I'd have to do this gearbox thing, have another gear here, put this on a race, and then connect that. Anyway, the point is, instead, what we've got is this tiny little bit of tolerance here. So if it really becomes a problem, this red piece here could be printed to where it's got full support all the way around. And that way, uh, uh, that way, anytime that the, the cap gets knocked, it'll, you know, put force on this yellow piece, but then this yellow piece will just be stopped by the red one. Um, you can't, oh wow, it didn't know it had a gearbox, thought it was direct drive. The, the one that we're looking at is direct drive. That that other one with the gearbox was was me off screen, off stream, uh, just playing around with the concept of how, how would I be able to offset the motor in this so that I could still fit, yeah, it still fit the, uh, uh, the lamp wedge or a lamp wedge. If it's a custom PCB that fits in there, uh, I don't think there's a lot I can do. Oh, there goes my mouse. Okay, I'm back. Okay. I've got a KVM that I just hooked up to this thing that, that tends to do that, which is hyper annoying, but whatever. So anyway, um, 
yeah, that's kind of where we're sitting with this. This, it, if it becomes an issue, this could be more round, and and the uh, yellow part could also match. Uh, so that way, any force that's being put on it would, you know, I think that the whole thing would do just fine. Um, and if need be, you know, you could you could put a couple of washers in there with a just a dab of uh, uh, oil, three in one or something. So. All right, so what are we doing here? We're gonna do now equals millies. And while, or here, we're gonna do start. And we're gonna do this stuff while uh, now is less than start plus, well, here. Let's do this, and Gonna be millis plus milliseconds. Oh, well, now is less than end. All right, so there's our loop. Is that out of scope? I never do do while, so I never know if that actually is in scope or not. Um, nope, that's not what we want. Okay, here. Okay, that's fine. So there's our loop that'll go on for that long. Um, it's time to light up and let's see. Uh, uh, let's. Uh, these are gonna be. Let's just make these ants. Um, Let's switch states every 100 milliseconds, I guess. We could try that. Um, boy, I'm really doing this ass backwards, but that's okay. Uh, last switch. Equals now i guess so we want to turn the pin on immediately and we want to check now so if now minus the last switch time greater than let's make this a constant greater than no count now we want to switch state again. We need to know what state we're in. We're doing poor man's BWM right now. Uh, on switch state, digital right in this state. And then whenever we break out of this, there. Let's see if that works. It may just be that I need to, if, if I want to do this with speed, I need to get an electronic uh, speed controller in ESP. I'll go look to see how much those are because there's a chip that'll just do this for us. We were 11 minutes out from new parts. Anybody have any good plans for the weekend? Or or am I looking at it? <laughs> Gotta run and record a movie podcast thing. Alright, man. Thanks for stopping by. Good to see you, as always. Thanks for uh, uh, taking those pictures. I'll check those out as soon as I'm done here. That didn't work the way that we expected. Let's not print this out. Oh, yeah. Hmm. 
We can just print it out every time that we switch it. Okay, why did that not work? Why did it only work in one direction? I wonder, I wonder if there's some actual startup torque that is necessary to move the pop, or move the uh, the motor in the first place. Again, I'm running this at five volts instead of six, so there is going to be a little bit of a of a ramp up, I suppose. Uh, let's do initial M sec. if that helps us at all. So we'll do this for a full second and the very first pulse will do 200. Need to figure out something fun to do while we're waiting for compiles and prints to finish. Sometimes I try to put myself out there. Oh. Sometimes I try to make it look like I'm comfortable in the skin I wear. But these words are right, here we go. This is really strange, huh? I'm done with all the fake love, so you should really just quit. Cause it's all the text on your phone, and it's hard to say. So it seems like it's hard to say. So I guess I'll be on my way. But I don't want to live it. No, it's not every other. Oh, I do see it slowing down, though. Interesting. Okay. Well, something is messed up with logic. Let's, uh... Since we're doing this, since we're just kind of hacking this together, this isn't going to do... Uh, this isn't going to do exactly what it is that we want it to do anyway. So... Um, let's see if doing, let's do this. Let's have it go for second on, uh, and then a second, or second slowly, and then a second full speed, and do that a couple of times, four. Let's do that four times. And let's see if we can just see it in the pop bumper. If we can, then maybe there's some, uh, some validity to this approach. It's probably better if I just get an electronic speed controller, though. Honestly. Got six minutes to see if the uh, uh, the prints work. I think I am going to wait for that to finish. Uh, we'll we'll see how the fit is, and then uh, I think we'll call it soon after that. I'm starting to get kind of hungry. that that's in frame um all right so we should see slow fast slow fast slow fast right okay well we were seeing pulses which means flipping every hundred milliseconds well, okay, we definitely need an electronic speed controller then because, uh, I mean, we're we're setting the duty cycle of this entire thing to uh, one-tenth of our one second. Yeah, see, that's just not going to work. 
just to make sure that this isn't something else, let's see if we can set this to... Uh, we'll put this to zero. I want to see what happens if we if we uh, uh, set our PWM frequency to what what would that be? 100 milliseconds? Oh, I guess it's at 200 right now. But you would think that that would be enough for it to move. So this last one will give us our answer. We'll figure it out. In the meantime, I wonder how much ESCs are. Do that off screen just in case. Electronic speed controller module. What do we have? Ooh, those are tiny. Uh, switch driver module, PWM, regular electronic switch. Yeah, so. Look at that. So we'll save that off. Take a look at that some other time. Okay, are we back? Let's see. Get back in frame. Right. Well, it's still just pulsing. Yeah, okay. I think we're trying to get this thing to do something it's not gonna do. That's fine. It's doing everything else we've asked it to do, so we're we're good. Oh, apparently I've got a package ready to go. Okay, well, <clears throat> in the meantime, uh, move power, kind of, uh, and start disassembling this thing so that we can put it in the new parts as soon as they're done. Excuse me, won't you? It's my wife. There we go. This seems reasonably viable. Could probably even stand to... Ah, oh, no, this is okay. I'm happy with this. Alright, what are we looking at? One more minute. Perfect. Anybody know any good jokes? Me neither. Hmm. So I've been trying to think of uh, what would be fun to do next. Um, I think uh, I think we've brought the spinning bop, er, pop bumper cap uh, mod to its uh, its fullest usefulness on stream. Um, so I guess we're gonna have to figure out what's next and move on. Um, there's a ton of stuff to do. The uh, the electronics that I have in the homebrew are homemade garbage, and I want to make slightly better homemade garbage electronics. So uh, uh, designing those out is going to be one thing. Uh, the microcontrollers that I want to use on the node boards uh, are I, I've got a bunch of them. So uh, one of the other things I need to do early on is figure out what that communication protocol is going to be between them and go ahead and write that up so that's another thing I can do um, uh, maybe we'll change some change gears a little bit and sit down and do uh, some more design that's always fun some play field design TG always sticks really well to these sheets
There we go. Waste. Okay, let me let that cool. And apparently I still have some strings from some black filament in here. All right, let's see. Let me get anything, let me get a better fit here. Quite a bit, but now it's not quite good enough. Actually, you know what? Because this bottom's out now, maybe it's maybe it's perfect. I'll be optimistic. Let's see how we did with this. Oh, well, it's still nice and tight. Ooh. That's nice. Well, actually, I did order uh, screws that I think are the correct size to screw into the motor uh, assembly. I didn't have any. I think they're 1.6 millimeter, and I have 1.4, 1.8, and 2, and none of those fit. So I took a chance and went ahead and ordered those. So at that point, having that... Uh, that snug fit around the motor is less important um, because the, it'll be directly screwed into the top of this part. Oh, that is great. All right, so now, yeah, this part that goes on the shaft is, is I can push it all the way down. Now I'm getting a little interference off of the screws. So let me see if I can back it out just a smidge. There we go. Although now that's kind of moving. Okay, I think we went a little bit too much with uh, webs, short M2. Hold the tech. I don't have any grub screws, but I do have really long M2s that we can use as a, as a grub screw funny that we were joking about putting this in in the first place, but it looks like it might actually be sort of useful. This is a comically long grub screw. Ugh, and it's going to be difficult to start, too. But we've done it. Perfect. Okay, and I'm hoping that there's enough clearance inside of the cap that still wants to sit in there. And there is. Great. Let's see, is this any easier to do now? It is. Okay, so those chamfers that we put in there are doing their job perfectly. Oops. The screwdriver is apparently magnetic, or has become magnetic. Where is the hole? Okay. All right. Now they're yeah. Now it's starting to bite. There aren't actually threads in here. We were discussing that earlier. It is now uh, these screws will uh, cut their own threads as they're being driven. Nice. Seems good to me. All right. Let's get the power one more time. Let's go back to our, our original thing. 
Or we just go for a second in one direction. Go ahead and build that again. Or up the, let's not miss thing. I know I'm not supposed to do this while it's on, but we're living dangerously. Okay, so we'll do this one last upload, and then I think we'll call it. I'm quite happy with the the uh, rigidity of the cap now. These parts are good, and as it turns out, having that that grub screw is is sort of perfect. So I guess the next step. Um, I don't know. Maybe we'll take a break from this and then uh, come back to it at a later stream because there there are a few more things that we could do. We could set up the the micro uh, microcontroller to have a few different modes of operation where it can listen for uh, pin transitions to trigger. Or uh, another thing that I was thinking about was whether or not I have some IMUs here um, and hooking one of those up to try to to uh, determine when the pop bumper actually fires uh, might be kind of interesting. That we'd, we'd be able to sort of create a uh, uh, inertial profile for what that looks like. The, the challenge would be if you have other mechanisms that are close by, is it is it distinct enough to where you can uh, uh, determine if it's, if it's indeed the mech that you're in uh, that is firing. So that may end up being more trouble than it's worth, but at any rate, let's see. So Well, there it is. It works. Okay, well, that's all that we set out to do today. I guess I'm going to go ahead and call it a day. Um, thanks, everybody, for stopping by. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm going to be doing this stuff anyway, so having the company is always uh, always appreciated for sure. Uh, let's figure out who should go raid. I guess I did this last time, but I really see a whole lot of other people on. Uh, yeah, let's go see what uh, Wild Dog is up to. There we go. So again, thank you everybody for stopping by. I hope to see you again next time. Um, I'm not sure exactly when that's going to be. Um, I'm trying to stream every Wednesday at the very least, and then maybe you know, squeeze one in uh, sometime during the week or on the weekend. Um, but um, yeah, I will do my best to adhere to that. So anyway, hope everybody has a good weekend. Take care. See you soon. <laughs>